Hey everyone, it's Linda McGrath Cruz from Perfectly Paralegal with a mini tutorial for you. Today we're going to be talking about how to use Adobe Acrobat to apply bait stamping and it's really, really easy, especially once you get used to it, you'll see it's a super fast and easy process and is really useful for a lot of things. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm using Adobe Acrobat 11 Pro. And one of the key differences between Standard and Pro is that Pro has an official bait stamping option. Standard does not. However, you can still accomplish bait stamping quite easily using the header and footer option in the Standard version. Really, the, one of the main differences in the Standard version using header footer is that it doesn't automatically adjust the leading zeros and you have to do the documents separately. Whereas using Pro, you can automatically bait stamp a number of PDFs at the same time, and it will continue the numbering correctly between each separate file. So, um, but don't worry, if you only have standard, I will show you in a separate video how to do that. So look for that video if that's what you have. So the first thing that you'll want to do is open the first document. Depending on what you're bait stamping, you may have one PDF or multiple PDFs. If you have multiple PDFs, um, you basically have two choices. You can combine them or into one if that's what you want to do, or if you want to keep them separate, you can certainly keep them separate. But you can add separate documents. You don't need to combine them unless you want to. So I have some sample documents here. And um, I've just, you know, set them up for the purposes of this so that you can see I have three separate documents so I can show you how to do multiples. So I'm going to go ahead and open my first sample, which is creatively called document number one, and it has five pages in it. So this is how Adobe Acrobat Pro looks. Uh, it's quite different from some of the prior versions. A lot of people are still using Adobe 8 and this is a pretty big difference from Adobe 8. So in order to do the bait stamping, what you're going to do is go to Tools, go to the Pages section. I already have it open, but if it's not open, you would just click on it. And then go down here to where it says Bates Numbering. You're going to click on Bates Numbering and click Add Bates Number. So you'll see here it's asking you to add the file that you want to Bates number. Since I already have the first file open, I'll go ahead and choose Add Open Files. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the document, click on it, and add file. Now, if you want to add additional files, you can just click on Add Files again and choose the appropriate document. If you have all the documents in one folder and you want to include the entire contents of that folder, you can click on Add Folder navigate to the folder that you want to add and then hit OK and it will pull all of the documents from that folder and add them. If you want to add individual files or maybe the files are in different locations, you can just click add files and navigate to the location of the files and then just pick and choose the ones that you want to add. Once you have all the files in here that are going to be bait stamped, you can use the up and down arrows to change the order. The order is very important. You want to make sure in this list that they're in the correct order because that's the way the numbering is going to go. So if you have multiple files here, because of the names, they're going to fall automatically into the same order, but you never want to take that for granted. Always double check it, but you can use the up and down arrows to move them around if you need to and you can always drag them also with your mouse to move them around. And if you needed to move chunks of them, you can highlight the chunk and then move it to different places. All right, so right now we have them in the right order. So before you go forward, you definitely want to look at the output options. You'll see that you have several options. The first option is the target folder for your final product. You can choose to save the bait stamp version to the same folder that you pulled the files from, or you can choose a different location. To choose a different location, just click on a folder on my computer, and then it's going to give you the option to browse to locate the folder. 
I prefer to do it this way so there's no question about where your files are going to end up. You can just browse and then choose whatever folder you want to put them in. The next option that you have is file naming. So you have three options basically. The first option is to keep the original file name and you'll see that this means it's going to overwrite the existing files. So depending on the files that you're using, you may or may not want to do this. If this is your original version copy of the PDFs, you may want to save a clean copy, you know, and then have a separate PDF copy. So you may not want to overwrite them. The second option that you have is to add a word before or after the existing file name. So you would just type it in here if you want to do it before, type it in here if you want to do it after, and then it's going to keep the same file name. It's just going to add whatever it is that you put there. So an example is this file here where I typed in the after box a space with a hyphen and then the word Bates. So this is the same document. It's just automatically saved and it automatically renamed it for me. So in this situation, if I just added the word Bates, it would make me document one, document two, document three, and they would all have the word Bates after them. And then you'll see that the third option is to replace the file name with the starting and ending Bates number. So I personally love this option. I think it's great. Um, the ideal option for me would be original name plus the Bates number, but I guess we can't have everything. So this is a sample where this is document one, which was five pages, and the system automatically renamed it PL, which is the Bates label that I chose, 001 through PL005. So this is actually document one renamed using the Bates number for that document. So that's one of the options. And the final option that you have is to create a log file. I love the log file. What the log file is going to do is it's going to give you a list of all the documents that you um, originally used. And then next to the document name, it's going to have the Bates stamp range. So I think that's fantastic because you can kind of use that to make yourself a document log. It's awesome. You can just copy and paste the information. So once you've chosen, you know, how you want to handle it, um, you can hit OK. And also the log file, just so you know, it usually has a default location. So if you want to change the location of the log file to somewhere where you can actually find it, I usually change it and put it in the same place as wherever I'm saving the bait stamp documents. So now it's going to go there. That way we can easily find it after the fact. All right. So now that we've chosen where the files are going to get saved, how the files are going to be named and whether or not you want to create a log file, you're going to go ahead and hit OK. So we just verify that our documents are in the correct order. If you need to remove anything, you can just click on it and hit remove. And again, you can use the up and down arrows or your mouse to make sure that the documents are in the right order and hit OK. So this is the header footer window, which in pro has the option to insert Bates numbers. So the first thing that I like to do is decide on a font type and font size. The generic is Arial and size eight, which I personally find is way too small. I usually just leave it on Arial and change it to at least a 12 or a 14 font size just to make it bigger. Um, you can also change the margins, although I've never done, I've never needed to do that. You can also change the color if you need to for some reason, but usually I just leave it in black. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the font size 14 so it's really easy for you guys to kind of see it in our sample here. Now the next thing that you have the option of is where you want to put your text. So these boxes reflect the six different places that you can add the Bates number or a header footer. Top left, top center, top right, bottom left, bottom center, bottom right. So you are going to decide where you want to put the bait stamp and then click your mouse in that box to select it. So I'm just going to put it in the right footer um, on the bottom. So the next thing that you're going to do is click on insert Bates number. Now you'll see here that you have a couple of options, the number of digits, and this basically sets your leading zeros. So it'll keep your numbers uniform. If you choose six zeros, and your Bates range, for example, is 1 through 100, 
the program will automatically add the appropriate amount of extra zeros to the beginning of the number so that the number is always six digits. You can change this number, but you have to have a minimum of three digits and a maximum of 15 digits. So I'm just going to put three. The starting number can be whatever number you need. If it's the first document in the set, you typically will be starting at one. But if you're continuing from an existing set, you can put in whatever number. So if you left off on 499, you can make your starting number 500. So it's just whatever number you want to start with. And then the prefix and the suffix um, is going to be your Bates you know, identifier. So typically with Bates labeling, you put a prefix. So to be simple, let's say these are plaintiff documents, and I'm just going to put PL for plaintiff. And you can also put spaces in these boxes for formatting. So I'm just going to put PL with a space, and I'm not going to, well, just for sample purposes, I'm just going to put something in the suffix, and I'll just put um, RFP. So these are documents in response to a request for production, just to have it there. And I'm going to put two spaces before it just to kind of space it out a little bit so the number and the prefix and the suffix are not all squished in there together. And I'm going to hit OK. So you'll see that it's added our information here, PL with the space, the Bates number, the two spaces, and then RFP. And then what you can do is, let's say you look at this now and you think, oh, I'd rather have it in the center. You can actually just cut and paste into the different box so you can check out how it looks in different places. Now, at this point, you can still change the font size. You can make it bigger, smaller. You can change the font type. You know, it's going to show you what a little sample of what your document looks like here. So you'll get an idea of what's going on. Now, sometimes you may have a page where the text or maybe there's a chart or graphic on the page and it goes particularly low. And if you click on appearance options, there's actually an option to help you with that. So under appearance options, one of the options is shrink document to avoid overwriting the document's text and graphics. And basically what that will do is it'll alter the document. It kind of shrinks it a little bit. So it's not going to look exactly like the original. It's just going to look like it was minimized slightly. But what it does is it shifts the entire visual portion of the page up a little bit so that there's space to add the header footer underneath. Um, don't do that unless you need to, because like I said, it does alter how the document looks slightly, but it's really good, especially uh, sometimes if you have contracts or real estate documents, for example, where the text is taking up the entire page and the bait stamp would otherwise be you know, on top of the actual text. The other way that you can handle that as well is you can adjust the margin slightly. And since you can see the document here, you know, if the document had text on it at the bottom, you would be able to see the text here. So you could always al um, alter the margin a little bit to deal with that problem as well. Now, another thing that you can do once you're happy with the look of the document, as far as the font type, font size and color, you know, along those lines, you can save it. So the next time you can just choose your saved format and you don't have to play around with the size or the font type or remember what you used last time. And then that way all of your Bates number documents are going to look uniform, at least in the style of the Bates number. So once you have everything here set up, you just go ahead and hit save settings and give it a name. So, you know, you could call it whatever you want and just save it like that. And then the next time when you come in, it'll just appear here in the list. You can choose it and it will automatically fill in all those settings for you. All right, the other thing that you can do in this screen, since it is the header footer screen, is if you wanted to add additional information, you can do that here. So we don't always do this with um, Bates number documents that are being produced, but let's say you're just adding identifiers for the purpose of organizing a document in-house you could add whatever other text you want. So I just went ahead and put the Bates number information back on the right bottom. And over here on the left bottom, you could always add, you know, an additional title. Uh, you could give it a document name. So let's just say documents prepared. And then if you want, you could even insert the date. The date is automatically set up as month and day. 
but you can change it over here with date format and you can put you know whatever format you want it to have so let's just put month day and year hit OK and then put insert date and then you see this additional information will appear down here at the bottom so this portion here is actually header footer and then this portion over here is actually bait stamp so for now I'm just gonna leave that out so really you have a lot of options as to how you can customize your document. And once you're ready and you're done with all the setup, you just go ahead and hit OK. And you'll see that the base numbering has been successfully applied to my three files. So you'll see it down here on the bottom of each page. And this is my document one since that's the one that I had open. So because I chose the option to rename using the Bates identifier, you'll see here that it has created a new version of my three files and it's renamed them for me automatically. Let's do the preview. So here, this is document two, which we didn't even have open. We just selected it, you know, as an additional file and it's added the Bates range and you'll see that it's continued the Bates range for me. So document number one, which has five pages is 001 through 005. And then document number two is 006 through 010 and so on. And then also it's created the log for us. And you'll see here that it gives us the file name and it gives us the Bates range. So, you know, it's not as useful if you rename the file because you'll see instead of saying document one, document two, document three, and then having the Bates range, because we chose to rename the file using the Bates number, it's kind of repetitive. But if you had chosen to keep the original file name or to keep the document name plus adding um, a prefix or a suffix, I think that that would be more useful. So it's really easy, as easy as that. You can see that all your documents now have been easily Bates stamped and saved. And you can always go back to the original document and add more information if you need to. Um, you can remove the Bates numbering. If you wanna start over, you wanna completely redo the design, whatever you have, you can just go ahead and click remove and it'll take them off. Um, this is super useful if you have, you know, for example, you could have hundreds of documents. You don't want to have to do those manually. Maybe for some reason you don't wanna combine them so if you have the pro version, that's obviously one of the big key features is that you can do it this way by bait stamping all the documents without combining them into one. Again, you can do bait stamping no problem using the header footer option. In the standard version, you're just missing the leading zero and then the ability to bait stamp multiple separate documents at one time. So that's how you bait stamp using Adobe Acrobat 11 Pro. Thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you found it super helpful. Feel free to leave your comments below. And if you haven't already, please join our group Perfectly Paralegal on Facebook to continue the conversation with paralegals from across the country.